A uh, quick note from section 2.1 before I get to the summaries of this section. Um, I think it makes more sense to talk about what your book calls 2.1 and what your book calls 2.2 all at once. So in 2.1, your book talks about linear functions, and in 2.2, your book uh, talks about the graphs of linear functions. But for me, they go hand in hand, and I think one really helps make the other make more sense. So I kind of like learning them at the same time. So these videos that I'm going to make will cover sections 2.1 and 2.2 in your book. All right, here is the fast version, the short version, the quick version of uh, section 2.1 from OpenStax Precalculus. Um, in this chapter, we're going to be talking about linear functions. Really, in this section, we're introducing these linear functions. Um, what you need to know is a linear function is a function that can be written as f of x equals mx plus b. So, for example, um, I don't know, f of x equals one-third x minus two. Fine. That's a linear function. Um, you can even get kind of cute with these things and say g of x equals one minus x over two. Well, that doesn't look like a linear function, right? But you can do a little bit of algebraic manipulation. Um, you could rewrite this as negative x plus 1 over 2. And then you could say that's negative x over 2, which is negative 1 half x plus 1 half. My point being that you can algebraically manipulate something like this to get it to fit into this form. That this, in fact, is a linear function. But typically, you'd see it written in this form, or you'd do some algebra to get it into this form. Those are linear functions. You're like, wait, I've heard that before, except when I learned it, instead of f of x equals mx plus b, it was y equals mx plus b. Yeah, that's that same thing. Exact same thing. This is in equation notation. This is in function notation. Exact same thing. This m is the same as this m that you probably learned in some other class, and this b is the same as this b. Um, in either case, the b represents the y-intercept, and the m represents the slope. And the slope is just some measure of steepness. Um, and really, it's given by this equation right here, which I'll talk about in just a second. And the B is the y-intercept. And that's why it's called slope-intercept form, um, because you need the slope and you get or need the intercept, specifically the y-intercept. Um, one other comment is that there's another form, another way you can write these things. Um, instead of y equals mx plus B, you can write it as y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This one translates into function notation really nicely. f of x changes into y, y changes into f of x, same thing. This one doesn't because if you change the y here into f of x, you won't have a function. You'd have this minus y1 on both sides. Um, but this one down here is still very useful. I can, I'll give you a couple, I'll give you a specific problem that will be useful to have this form for. So really big picture, what you want to know from this section is linear function is something you can write like this. And the number in place of m is the slope. And the number in place of b is your y-intercept. There's these two forms that will be useful kind of as stages to get you into this end game. Uh, one's called slope-intercept form. And it relies on knowing the slope and the y-intercept. And the other one's called point-slope form. And it relies on knowing some point, not necessarily the y-intercept, any point you want, and the slope. And that's all the main definitions you'll need from this section. So let's work through a couple of examples. Um, f of x equals 1 third x minus 2. It'd be good to be able to graph that. Fortunately, um, you can linear functions are relatively easy to graph. You could do this a few ways. I mean, you could do this using a chapter 1 point of view where you just plug in inputs, figure out what the outputs are, and plot a whole lot of points, and try your best to connect them. But how do you connect them? Well, what you'll see is that you always connect them with a straight line. That's where the name linear functions comes from, is that the graph of anything that you can write in this form will be a straight line. So this, for example, the graph will be a straight line. And you could prove that to yourself by plugging in 20 different x values and figuring out their corresponding y values and plotting them all, and it'll look like they fall in a straight line. Or you could take that as a given that the graph of linear functions are straight lines. And then instead of just finding input-output pairs, you could use the y-intercept and the slope to come up with the graph of this function. So that'll be the most efficient way to graph linear functions. You'll start by looking at the y-intercept. So you'll look at the, whoops, you'll look at this negative 2 right here. And you'll say my y-intercept is negative 2. So this y-axis right here, my graph is going to cross it at this point right here. So now I have one point. And if I could just find one more point, that would be all I need 
because I've already recognized that this is a linear function. And because it's a linear function, its graph is just a line, a straight line. And to get the other point, I'll use my slope. My slope is one third. M equals one third. The value of M in this equation is one third. And how do you use that? Well, you might already know that, but the slope, as I mentioned before, it's a definite, it's a measure of the steepness of a graph. If the slope is a positive number, that means your graph is going up as you read it from left to right. If it's a negative number, you're going down as you read it from left to right. If it's zero, that means you're horizontal, you're not going up or down. Um, and the larger the number is in absolute value is uh, tells you how steep the graph is. So one third is a pretty small, it's less than one, so it's not gonna be very steep, it's gonna be pretty shallow. More specifically, the slope is rise divided by run. It's how much your y coordinates change divided by how much your x coordinates change. It's how much you go up divided by how much you go to the right, which is this last one is probably my favorite way to look at these. Um, I am gonna go up by positive one and right by positive three from this point that was already on my graph. So I'm not starting at the origin, I'm starting at this point that I found from the y-intercept. I go up one, right three, I get here. You know, like, well that's two points, is that enough? Yeah, that's enough. Because you know that this is a linear function. So you know that it's a straight line that connects these two. Because I'm on a computer and it's hard um, to draw straight lines, I'm gonna figure out another point. And to figure out another point, I can go up one more and right three more and get another point out here. Okay, that helps a little bit, but over here I'm afraid it might get a little bit squirrely. Well, note that one-third is the same as negative one. I'll write this. One-third equals negative one divided by negative three. So from here I could also go up by negative one, aka down one, and right by negative three, aka left three, and get to this point right here. Go down one and left three and get to this point. And now I have so many that it'll be relatively easy for me to connect them with a straight line and come up with this graph right here. And that's it. When you have an equation like this, you can graph it just like this. Uh, let's go backwards. Suppose that I had a graph that went through this point right here and I don't know, this point right here. Well, if it goes through those two points, I guess I could draw this straight line. Uh, let me try my best to draw a straight line here on the computer. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. I think that's about right. Uh, what if I wanted to know the equation of this guy? Well, do the same thing you did just did, just reverse the process. First, find the y-intercept. The y-intercept here is positive three. So from this point, I know that b equals positive three. So at the end here, I'm gonna have a plus three. What's the slope? Well, from this point to get to this point, I went up by negative two and right by one. So the slope is negative two divided by one, which is just equal to negative two. So what I have is that if I were given this graph right here, I could immediately come up with the equation of this linear function, g of x equals negative two x plus three. This is equivalent to three minus two x, but typically you won't write three minus two x, you'll write negative two x plus three so that it's in your standard form that I have written up here. Most important thing I think from this section is to be able to go back and forth between an equation and its graph. Uh, if given the equation, come up with the graph. If given the graph, come up with the equation. One last thing that you'll want to be able to do is solve questions like, um, I have a function and it passes through two points. And pick any two points, negative two, negative one, um, I don't know, three, negative three, fine. Here's two points right here. A, a function passes through this point and this point. What is it? What is the function? Implied in here is write the function in this form. To write the function in this form, I need to know what m is and what b is. Unfortunately, neither of those two things were given to me. I could have come up with a couple of other examples and worked you up slowly to this somewhat hard example. Um, I could have given you one where I gave you the y-intercept but didn't give you the slope and you did some work and figured out the slope. Or I gave you the slope and I didn't give you the y-intercept and you did some work and figured out the y-intercept. But here's one where you do everything. Here's an example. I don't have m or b. So there's really two steps to this process. I'm going to first figure out m. And the way I'll figure out m is by using this formula here. 
I know that m is the change in the y-coordinates divided by the change in the x-coordinates. So what I'm going to do is arbitrarily name these things. If you want to make this the ones and this the twos, that's fine. If you want to make this the twos and this the ones, that's fine. Just be consistent. If you call this x1, you better call this y1. And therefore, this would be x2, and this would have to be y2. And then plug them into this formula. My formula tells me that the slope is y2, which I just said was negative 3, minus y1, which it appears is negative 1, divided by x2, which is positive 3, minus x1, which is negative 2. Negative 3 minus negative 1 is the same as negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2. 3 minus negative 2 is the same as 3 plus 2, which is 5. So my slope is negative 2 fifths. And now what I can do is take my point slope form. How do I know to take my point slope form? Well, for point slope form, you need any one point and the slope. And I just figured out the slope, and I have a point. Use this one if you want, or use this one. It doesn't matter. I have two points. I only need one. I have everything I need for point slope form. You could try to use slope intercept form, and actually I'm going to show you a way to use slope intercept form. But really for slope intercept form, you want the slope, which yeah, I got that, and the y intercept, which we don't yet have. I'll show you a way to use that later, but first I want to use this form. To use this form, copy this equation here, except in place of x1 and y1, write x1 and y1. And in place of m, write what you just figured out m was equal to. So I got y equals, nope, sorry, I have y minus, and then in place of y1, I'll write negative 1. And that equals m, which is negative 2 fifths, times x minus, and then I got to write x1. Well, x1 is negative 2. Maybe I can clean this thing up a little bit. This is y plus 1 equals negative 2 fifths times x plus 2. What I have is an equation that I can solve for y. I could solve this thing for y, subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. If you really cared, if you didn't want these, what I would do. You could subtract 1 from both sides of the equation right now to get the y all by itself. But I would wait. I would do that one line later. Maybe I come over here. I would say y plus 1 equals negative 2 fifths x minus 4 fifths. I would first take this negative 2 fifths and distribute it through the parentheses. Negative 2 fifths times 2 is negative 2 fifths times 2 divided by 1. And if you multiply straight across, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, and 5 times 1 is 5. So you get here. And then I subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. Uh, negative 4 fifths minus 1 is the same as negative 4 fifths minus 5 fifths, which gives me negative 9 fifths. And so this is slope-intercept form. Note that point-slope form is a handy go-between from the information that I had here to slope-intercept form. Once I have slope-intercept form, I have everything I need to write it as a linear function. f of x equals mx plus b, that's essentially what I have right here. I just, instead of writing the letter y, I'm going to write f of x. A little bit hard to read there, but this would be the answer to this question. I want to redo this without ever using point-slope form because so many students like to avoid point-slope form. Um, it's not that bad, and if my advice would be for you to memorize this point-slope form or at least know how to come up with it, um, and how you can come up with it, maybe before I use it, I'll show you a good way to remember it, is if you have your slope formula memorized, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is what m is. If you have that memorized, all you need to come up with this is drop the twos. So instead of y2 minus y1, write y minus y1. And instead of x2 minus x1, write x minus x1. And the reason you do that is now if you multiply both sides of the equation by x minus x1, on the left you'd have m times x minus x1, and on the right you just have y minus y1, because you multiply both sides by the denominator here, that canceled out on the right. And note that this is exactly this. Um, over here I have my y's on the right, here they're on the left, but it's the same thing mathematically, this and this. So that can help you memorize this form, and it's a useful form. It really does solve questions like this one that I have here. Now that I've shown you how to use this, let me show you a way to get around using it, just because I figure might as well. Um, you can jump straight to y equals mx plus b, kind of. y equals mx plus b is my end game, right? That's where I want things to end up. That's kind of what my answer is, one step away from writing it in function notation. And so what you can do 
is, well, I know m is negative 2 fifths. Okay, you don't know that at the start. You still have to do this first step where you solve for m. I have two points, I can figure out m. So you're still going through all these steps. I won't repeat them, but the same way we did before, you'll calculate that m equals negative 2 fifths. Um, and now what you can do is you're like, but I still need to know what b is, right? If you knew what b is, you'd be done, but we don't have b. But we can solve for b by taking either of these points and plugging them in for x and y, because this equation has to hold for any xy pair. So it holds for this xy pair, it holds for this xy pair. Take any xy pair you want, it doesn't matter. Maybe I'll arbitrarily choose this one and plug those in for x and y. What you now have is an equation and that equation only has one letter in it, b. I could solve for b, no problem. Negative three equals, uh, think about this as three divided by one. Then when you multiply, you get negative six fifths plus b. And so now if I add six fifths to both sides of the equation, I'll have b all by itself. What is negative three plus six fifths? Well, negative three is the same as negative 15 fifths. And negative 15 fifths plus six fifths would be what, negative nine fifths. And that's what b is equal to. And you're not done now, right? Now I know m and I know b, I have all the pieces I need, but I still have to go back and say, okay, so f of x equals m, which I figured out was negative two fifths, x plus b, which is the negative nine fifths. And note that I end up with the exact same answer here as I did here. I showed you two ways to do something. Typically, if I have two ways to do something, I'll tell you which one's better and I'll tell you not to bother with the other one. This is a rare case where it's useful to know how to use both of these. I think it's worth your time. I mean, you have a limited amount of time you're gonna spend on this class and stuff you'll memorize. I think you should know both of these forms. I think it'll help you to be able to use both forms to understand slope intercept and point slope form and kind of how they relate and how they can help you come up with the equation of a function. I'll stop this one here.